All right, so in today's simple assignment, we're going to dive into Blender here. Now that we have the basics under our belt, we're going to try to make a simple face like you're seeing right here. So I've made a sort of blocky minion. This is what we're heading towards. So let me tell you a little bit about how I have this file set up, and then we'll introduce a couple of new concepts. So the first set of new concepts we'll look at are some um, organization in our scene collection. So by default, you normally have objects all added to the same collection. Here I've renamed this collection Minion, and that's where a bunch of these objects went. I should probably be naming them. I was a little messy here. Uh, so that's where they are. And you'll see these icons here on the right, and these are controlled by the filter. So by default, this one is usually not selected, but the arrow tells us whether or not something is selectable. In almost every other program, this will show up like a padlock, which really confused me at first. Uh, you've also got the eye as to whether or not it's visible in the viewport, but then you've also got whether or not it will be rendered out. Okay, so this is another funny thing, right? If something is visible here, but invisible to the render, when I click render, this won't show up. But then maybe even more confusing, if it's set up like this, and I render this, that head will still show up in the render, even though I can't see it here. So that's, that's worth remembering. Okay, so I've got my little minion. Now, uh, right now I have it rendering in cycles. So if we take a look at the cycles setup, I have cycles set as the render engine. And then down here under viewport sampling, I've limited the max samples to 10. So it'll resolve pretty well, but then it won't just keep chugging and chugging and wasting uh, computer cycles. I've also unchecked denoise, at least as far as the viewport is concerned. So if this is checked, this will really bog down the machine, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. However, we have a giant samples cap when it comes to the render itself, and then also denoise is checked. So, so we're going to save all of that extra work for our official renders. Um, you can also see down here on the second tab under output, I've limited this to a square output uh, because it's easier to pop that stuff up on Instagram, for example. But you can, you know, you can output these however you like. Uh, okay, so I'm going to hide this collection. I'm going to make it unselectable and also hide it in the uh, render. And then I just right-clicked and made a new collection here. And so I've got, I had to move my camera and my light over. And then I've just got a cube and the little kind of plane I was working on before. And if I want to tighten up, you know, this, I can, I can check lock to view and then kind of move this stuff around because it's a little different from our minion. You know, maybe get something that looks roughly like that. And I've added a cube and put a material on it. Another thing I forgot to mention in our last video, if I take a look here at the materials. So, right, I have a base color and then I also have a subsurface color, which is how light kind of penetrates a little bit and bounces back out. I think I forgot to mention that you have to set the subsurface color and you have to turn up the, uh, the number a little bit or else it's not going to do anything. Okay, anyway, so, so that's, that's pretty much how we've, um, we've gotten all of our stuff started here. Now let's, um, let's add in a couple of, um, couple of ideas. So today we're going to be working with a new concept um, called the modifier, and this comes up a lot in Blender. If you have an object selected, it's located right here with this little wrench. And if I click on Add Modifier, there are just a ton. Uh, but the ones that we're going to focus on are going to be the Boolean operation and the mirror operation. So if you watch my first video, you might be asking, well, I, I thought we had the add-on bool tools to take care of this. And while that's kind of true, bool tools works in a little bit of a different way. Uh, the Boolean modifier over here can stay live and allow you to make edits for a longer period of time. So you have maybe a little bit more control. It's just more steps. So it's going to be up to you to decide which one that you're going to use. Maybe I'll shift over here um, out of camera mode and then into uh, shading or something like that to figure out what I'm doing. And let's just uh, hide that plane for now, too. Okay, cool. So I've got my face here, and I want to start to carve away at it with geometric primes. One of the reasons that we have this limit is so that uh, there's just not too many things to work on at the same time, but it is limiting, right? So let's say uh, we're going to start out by taking a notch out on the back here to make this into sort of more of a blocky skull shape. I can go to Shift-A and add in a cube. Uh, also, if I wanted to, I could just select this and say... I believe it's uh, Shifty, I think. Yeah, Shifty for duplicate. And then if I limit this along the Y axis, I can pull this straight back and then use the gizmo, for example, to move it down. And then I can take a chunk out of the head that looks something like that. Sometimes when you have two objects that are exactly the same width or height or whatever it happens to be, Booleans can fail. At least that's my experience in other programs. So I'll hit S for scale, and then I'll scale this in X so that it's super clear, right, that that secondary box is exceeding 
the edges of this box on every side. So there's going to be no confusion about um, uh, faces laying up against one another. Okay, now for a modifier, this can get confusing. So I'll select my object that I want to take something away from. Once that's selected, I'll add a modifier and then go down to, I should note, right, that's the wrench. Add modifier and go to Boolean. Okay, so I get this little object that shows up. You can have lots of modifiers on the same object, and also the order they're in sometimes makes a difference, something to remember for the future. Um, oh, and then because I'm doing this, um, this will come up if you're not careful. Because we moved this around and scaled it, we'll want to come in here and say Shift-A. Oop, not Shift-A, Control-A. And then that's going to be Apply All Transformations. So that renders this thing now. That's the its sort of original size now. If we try to do this without applying transformations, it can cause errors. Okay, select this object. We've got a Boolean. The object that is going to be um, thought about in relation to our first object is the secondary one, and I have different selected. So watch this line right here. When I do that, you see the line now adjusts to reflect that new geometry. And this is the cool part, right? So I can hide um, this new one, and I can see that there. So let's say, for example, I wanted this to be slightly different. Now I can bring this object back, select it, and then move it around a little bit, and you'll see that the other object updates to reflect the move. So this can kind of be kind of a nice way, unlike Bool Tools, which you can really only do once and then either undo it or leave it. Uh, but this way I can kind of scoot something around until I think it's perfect. Now over time, you know, the relationship between these live modifiers can cause problems. So once you're ready for this to be official, you can just come in here click on this arrow and say, again, apply, just like applying transformations, um, this Boolean will evaporate, um, and it may well delete cube um, 003 as well. Uh, but if, if you're running into problems where it's saying things aren't applied, you might have to go ahead and do that. And let's be good about, um, about labeling stuff as we go here. Maybe I'll call this the, uh, the skull. Okay, so that's one type of modifier. Now, let's say I want to make some eye sockets, and we're going to keep um, with our theme of just using primes. So Shift-A, I'll come in here with a um, UV sphere. And then right now, I just, you know, the gizmo is pretty convenient, although I like doing scale with the S key. I'm going to look up here from the top, and I'm going to drag this thing down until it's slightly more than halfway because I don't want my eye socket to kind of cut back like that before it before it pulls around. This is looking pretty good. Maybe still a little bit large, so we'll kind of get this into position. I can look at my face straight on. If I grab one of these squares, it lets me move in two axes at the same time. So we'll do something like that. Okay, so by default, when you add new geometry, the center of that geometry is right here at the origin of the, uh, of the world coordinate system, right? And this is really useful for mirroring stuff because I'm going to mirror along the x-axis, in this case, on either side of the y-axis. So I pick the object to mirror. It's this one right here. I'll add a modifier, and in this case, I'll go down to mirror. Uh, and then sometimes this is a little tricky because, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you have to pick the axis along which the sort of objects are traveling. So they're on either side of the y-axis, but they're mirrored along the x-axis. So I'll leave x there, and then I will say mirror object, and I'll take a sample of that, and now I get it on the other side. If you have the wrong one of these checked, you know, it might be heading in the wrong direction. In that case, you can just come up here and you can change these as, as much as you want until you come down here and say apply. And the cool thing too, right, if I look at this from the front, as I move this around, you'll see that that mirror relationship is kind of maintained. And I can do other things too, like I can scale it and so on. Uh, so let's check up here from the top. You know, there's still, the center is peeking out a little bit, so that's looking good. So let's see if we can get away now with adding a second Boolean operation while these things also have a modifier applied to them. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, right? So the object is selected. We need to make a new modifier uh, for each relationship. And then if I go in and say Boolean, okay, so I need to know which one I'm talking about. It's the point 001. I'm going to select this object is the object in question. And then now if I come down and I hide those spheres, I can see that that is working. So this, this can get a little bit confusing over time. So, so once you pick something and you like the spot where it, um, it is living, you may want to go ahead and just accept these changes. So I will say apply 
and apply. And then now, even though these spheres do still technically exist, they're no longer in relationship to this object. So this piece of geometry is doing its own thing. If, if I go over here to wireframe mode, I can see that that object now you know, has that geometry and it's kind of permanent. Okay, so um, we can start to switch over occasionally and kind of take a look at how things are acting in a rendered scenario and that's looking pretty good. Um, so now I'm just gonna start to add in some objects um, just you know, making this thing look nice. But you can see how, as you start to stack up uh, primes and use Boolean operations, you can make things that are much more complex than just a, a stock cube or a stock sphere. Maybe I'll show you real quick how to make the um, eyeballs, or one way to make the eyeballs, and then I'll leave you to it. So we still have these spheres we used for our original um, uh, eye sockets. I can take these now and kind of scale them down. And then maybe I'll sink them down into the um, uh, those eye sockets a little bit. Let's look at this thing from the top. Maybe they need to get buried more significantly. And I could put them like totally within the head, so something like that. Now this starts to get into the aesthetic decision, so this is going to be totally up to you. Uh, I'll grab this and say Shift D for duplicate. And then now I get a new set of objects, and they're still uh, mirrored, right, which is useful. So let's come over to our Materials preview. And I'll pick these eyeballs, go down to Material, make a new one. And that material is going to be white. And maybe we'll do with like a little bit of a, um, a slightly reddish uh, subsurface. Maybe this guy stayed up too late or something. Generally, stock white and stock black are just not very impressive colors to look at, right? Except in very specific situations. Now let's scale this way down because I'm going to make the uh, pupil and iris. I'm, I personally am not going to bother with um, making a colorful eye. And then we're just going to move these until they're sticking out just slightly. Now if you take a look at people's corneas, right? I mean, eyeballs, they don't just have like a giant black spot in them. Oh, here we can make a... That's going to be a weird one. <laughs> um... You know, they certainly don't stick out quite that far, uh, but I think we want to get in here. Uh, maybe I'll look at this in wireframe. Oops. Went to pan. And I can kind of move this around until it's just peeking out a little bit. Move back to the material preview, take another look. So that's starting to look pretty good. Uh, we'll take these and associate them with the material. In this case, it's going to be black, and I'm going to break break the rule that I just mentioned. I think black you know, pupils are fine. I'm not even going to bother with a uh, subsurface. Maybe we could get in there and mess around with um, you know, the sheen and how shiny they are or whatever, but I'll just kind of leave them alone for now. Okay, so there's my, uh, there's my eyeballs right there. And then uh, from here on out, you know, kind of the, the world's your oyster. So as you're adding in these features, you can get really creative. For example, if I wanted to make um, small details that look kind of like uh, a contour line or something like that. I could go into my Shift A Add menu and um, add in, you know, simple cylinders. Uh, I can take a cube and I can cut it with multiple objects until it starts to become quite complex. When you're starting to build the nose, for example, um, really, it's just totally up to you. So, you know, be creative. Think about um, what the primes are that you're aware of and how they could be kind of cut to make more complex objects. And you can see how just some, uh, some simple materials-based rendering really starts to make this feel um, lively, even though we only have a couple of really basic shapes so far. All right, have fun. Dive in.